What's up, everybody? Episode 34, Just Like Brothers Podcast, Goldsboro, North Carolina. Uh, our Shack, our Lakers Shack episode, as I said. Yeah. Our They Don't Love You Like That episode. Uh, I guess it's also been a Walter Payton episode as well. Oh, yeah, the Beast, of course. Yep. Um, as always, my name is Laika Abibi, also known as Kai Jones to some people, but I'm not actually Kai Jones, he is. I am, yes. Uh, and we are back. We are now through the third round of the state playoffs into the fourth round uh, where we have one team from your area left standing, but we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, we would like to start with the announcement that you made of the rosters for the WJG Sports Classic. WJG Sports Classic rosters just came out last night. I'm very excited about the 45 young men and women who have decided to to come out and play in this uh, classic that we hope becomes, you know, a great tradition that can be happen that can happen every year here in Goldsboro or in Johnson County or even Greene County one year. You know, it just depends on how things look. Um, just like the last episode, a ding. Yeah, a ding. But this time it's on your iPad. Yeah, this time it's from my iPad. Uh, we got Charles Clark texting us, um, of course, about Clayton and Westover. You know, he's a big fan of little guy. Yeah, um, nine dime. Yeah. Um, and, of course, Clayton won on uh, Saturday to go to, this is the fun, this is the lead eight now. The fourth year. round. They're now going to play favor Westover. Right, now um, three wins away from the state title. That's right. Westover comes in undefeated. They have not been, I don't think they've been touched in their three playoff games. Right. From what I remember. While Clayton has had a little bit more problems in the first round, of course, they handled Hart Central pretty easily. Second round against Northern Nash, one by three. And then uh, on, on uh, Saturday. Saturday, I believe they won by five, I believe. Four. Four. Against Eastern Guilford, against Caden Dawkins, who right. put on that show against Al Johnson. Uh, but. Either way, the playoffs are different for every team. Right, um, right. I think it's good that Clayton's played some close games and they've been able to find a way, but this was going to be a different beast because Westover obviously has been undefeated all season. Right. They, play, they had a close call. The first time I saw them play was uh, the shot Darius Jewel hit to keep them undefeated against Granville Central mm -hmm. when it looked like it was over. Uh, but this will be this will be an amazing matchup, of course, Shout out to the Clayton boys for getting it done on Saturday. Yeah, yeah uh, against a really good team. But this is going to be a this is going to be a good challenge. So, so Clark, I was I tried to call him to talk about it, but he is uh, currently dealing with some car issues right now. Uh, we hope that uh, the car issues get better for for the good Reverend Charles Clark for the rest. CHC three Reverend CHC three. Um, and uh, oh, oh. wait, well I couldn't get the couldn't get the text to pull up on my iPad because my iPad sometimes is a little funny. Um, but he's giving you he's giving you a breakdown of Westover. He said Westover is loaded. I can't even lie. They play a smooth eight to nine a night of all guys that can play on the next level. Yep. Lake is going to have to have a big game from BJ, and somebody else will have to go for at least twenty. I think that's absolutely correct. Yep, um, that somebody's probably going to have to be Mason Rush. Yeah, Mason's going to need twenty, and, and BJ's probably going to need at least twenty to twenty-five. I think, um, yeah, and maybe, I think they also need one guy to have 10 to 15 as well. Like I think someone they, I like think they need a Shakira probably, Howard or Joe Pond Ross. I think they need two guys to have at least 10. Yeah, okay, two. Team. Okay, so it could be I, both of them. I think a uh, Jaquan Ross, a Shakira Howard, a Seth Shepard, a, uh, um, um, not Seth Shepard, Elijah Shepard, I believe. Um, you know, uh, Justin Bell, yeah, Javante yeah. Long. Bell would be, Bell would be more, I think. Yeah, he, you're, you're, gonna need, you're gonna need a third guy. You're gonna need third and fourth guy. I think they need at least ten to fifteen points to give you a shot to win this game, as well as you're gonna need some great defense. Now, I've talked to BJ about this in the past, and his biggest thing was, "Hey, Westover only plays eight or nine guys. We can go eleven or twelve deep." Um, depth is absolutely, is absolutely important at times, um, but sometimes I think in the playoffs it kind of gets like you when you're playing your yeah. best guys. That's yeah. kind of you know right. See, but that's the thing though. Clayton has routinely rotated their starters, and they've gotten contributions. You know, I, I think yeah, that's true. I think I tweeted it out that I've been to five Clayton games. I think they've had five other guys other than BJ and Mason go for at least ten points in in those games. Um, they're gonna need. They're so gonna need two I, this time. To me, sure. I think they have seven to eight starters plus another two to three that can come off the bench as well, and have done a good job of giving them good minutes. 
Um, it'll be interesting to see what they go with. Do they go a small ball lineup? Um, do you go kind of a bigger lineup? With, um, well, they do. I mean, Tremont Willis Shaw is about six 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 seven. He's a little bit lanky. Right. Uh, obviously, I would say obviously BJ's got some weight on him a little right. bit, but he's a good player. Uh, he can he has held his own against big. So right. Uh, I mean, so I think maybe you go Elijah Sanders. Maybe you, you could. start out with Elijah Sanders. Go give him one, and then um, possibly maybe you put Javante Long or Demarco Dunn. Um, Javante is a lot smaller than DeMarco Dunn, so you're going to be giving up some size, but he has the quickness, and I still think he's pretty strong enough not to get bullied by DeMarco. But that um, DeMarco Dunn is different. I'd yeah, to me, this is the matchup of two, the two best players in the 3A East by far. To me, these are the best two guys in the 3A East. Um, when you look For your at, money. Yeah. <laughs> For your money. Yeah. yeah. I, and honestly, I don't think, I don't think they're – if you said that to people, people might have differing opinions. But right. like, if you say those two, I mean, it's not a bad two to go. Yeah, with. I mean, sometimes I think BJ is better than Demarco, Demarco better than BJ. But I mean, both are uh, absolutely spectacular young men, absolutely spectacular young players. Um, the They're biggest, different. Yeah, they differ, as the as the kids say. Another game, huh? Yeah. I'm just messing with you. Yeah. Tra that, that's Trey Corder right there. Hoop Farm mixtapes. Yeah, Hoop Farm mixtapes. Um, Shout out to him. He's always a, a great dude. Great yeah, guest. Trey, of course. Um, um, but nonetheless, I think this is great for Clayton that they get to have this challenge. Right. At, in Fayetteville, you're going to pull up, right? You're going to yeah, 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 yeah. We're going, we're going to Fayetteville. Um, yeah, buddy. The one thing I will say is that that's interesting to me is – Depth sometimes it doesn't work in the playoffs though too. Depth can sometimes that's exactly what I, yes. I, what you were talking about. I want to go yes. back to that. Point. Yes, go sometimes ahead. Go the ahead. depth doesn't show up enough because the other team has five or six. Five, their seven players is better than most people. Two. I mean, it's better than your or? better than your four through your eight, four through twelve. Yeah. Uh huh. So that's yeah. the, and that's the problem. You, know, you can't put five guys on the floor consistently who can match the uh, ability of the other team. That's where you hit the problem with. Because uh, again, I went to on Saturday, Goldsboro versus uh, Granville. Nice uh, transition. Yeah, yeah. I think we are the king of transitions on yeah, the show. Go ahead. I think that's where Goldsboro ran into the issues. Um, they couldn't consistently put five on the floor that could match the type of ability that South Granville has, one through five. South Granville, I probably say that their five players probably paid 25 to 27 minutes um, in the first three quarters. I probably say like the two, most like of they, them. They yeah. like they, they played the entire game? Or? Um, until like the end of the fourth. Until like it got out of hand. Yeah, until they realized like, okay, Goldsboro is kind of put in their bench and they kind of rotated all their guys out. I mean, I think Bobby was done probably with five minutes left in the fourth. Okay. And I don't think he sat much besides maybe like one minute in the first or second quarter. Um, but nonetheless, you had you got to enjoy the Bobby Pettiford yeah, show. Yeah, I mean, Bobby Pettiford uh, showed me why he is an uh, ACC point guard. He is uh, the real deal. Uh, that's the type of competition that I think that Goldsboro is going to um, have to go up against. Well, I think that's the type of competition that Goldsboro has to build up into being more often. Um, I, I think, think that's a blueprint that they could use the way South Grand kind of. Truthfully, I asked Coach Croom after the game, I said, Did you kind of see yourself in this guy's, in, in these guys' mold? Because this was South Granville years ago, even last year, you could say, against Green Central. You know, they, they, they were not ready. They were a young team. They're still a young team. But yeah. Last year, they were young, way younger. Yeah. Like their entire, like that same group that you saw, minus Kobe Jones, who's a. High flying beast, man. Let me tell you. Right. But uh, those other four, Makai Jones, like he's Allen, Bobby, right. uh, they they ran into trouble against Green Central, a very experienced team. Right. Had a lot of really good players. Right. And that's and that's what South Granville is right now. Right? Now yeah. they're yes. Right. Yes. Their only takes progression. You know, I think Goldsboro, you lose Christian, but I think you're about to set yourself up for a really nice run. You have Takori, who's a freshman, who will be a sophomore next year. You have year. X. You have three years. years expected of him. You got X coming up on his senior year after just. Dimage Oates. Yeah, Dimage Oates after just, um, 
you know, when I think about Xavier, you know, he just won Conference Player of the Year this year. So congratulations, Alex. Yeah, that. yeah, he That's just awesome. won Conference of the play, Conference Player of the well, Year this sir. year. So now the question is um, just being able to take everything they have and be able to take it up the next level. When you look at Kinston, I mean, you don't know what they're going to be next year. I mean, Don, John, obviously, Dontrez is a senior, but. Jer- Dontrez and Jeremy Dixon are really your only pieces that you're going to have back from this Kinston team. Farmville Central, the only pieces that you're going to have back is Jaquavion Smith right now. Jaquavion, yeah, that would be their main yeah, guy. That would be their main guy. Of course, they have a great bench, and I don't think that they're going to be. short, Josh Short. Yeah, I don't, I don't think at all. Derek that they're, Cox. I don't think at all that they're just going to go away. I think they're going to retool, of and course. You know how, Kinston will retool as well. Absolutely, because we Perry Tindall and Larry Williford are two yeah. great coaches. I can't yeah. wait to talk that matchup later in the show. Yeah. That's going to be such a good game again. Um, but continue, I'm sorry. But when you look at it, Goldsboro will probably have the most out of any of those any of those teams left. In terms of returning players? Yeah, in terms yeah. of returning players. You're talking about you're gonna plus what they're gonna get from this freshman class. Yes. You know, they have a great middle school program um, absolutely coming in too. So they're gonna get two or three players from their middle school who are gonna step in and be able to contribute right away. Um you lose two starters in Christian Bull, which hurts, but Demaj Oates and him are very close. Demaj was mentored by Christian Bullock. And Demash um, has a lot of potential. Yeah, he does. He does. I mean, he had some. He had some moments in Saturday's game where he looked really good, and then he had some moments where he still looked like a freshman. And I think that's kind of been his story all year long. That's. I honestly yeah. think the growing pains are good. It's a Bro, good. To, it's good to throw him in the fire and see and see what he can do in these moments. They are important. They're going to be so important when he gets to be a junior or a senior. And he's going to be like the bully. You know? Yeah, he's so, going to be one of those guards who who is like that. Um, so now, like, like I said, it's just all about for them being able to lock in. X, this is probably one of the biggest summer of his life when it comes to He has to have a big, college. big, big summer. Has right. to have. He's definitely going to be a college player, I think. Yes. But it's all about how good his summer is will determine probably where he ends up playing at to start that college career. And I, think he can, I, can play, I think he can play at some, some higher levels, but it's all about the type of work that he puts in. And then him and Takori just kind of growing together and trying to figure out next year how to coexist as, as top guys. Because sometimes this year I do believe that um, they could they had problems having big games together. Yeah. You know. But shout out one time for Christian Bullock. Yeah. Uh, thousand point score. Thousand point score. Means a lot to that Goldsboro program. Yeah. Definitely will be missing. I can't. I hope he gets to play at the next level. He and will I be see, in the WJG Sports Classic. He will. Um, the thing I will have to say about that South Granville uh, arena, man, it's 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 going to be hard for Reedville to be able to compete in that type of environment. Well, they are loud. Reedville does have a similar type of atmosphere. But the thing but, is, going on the road. Yeah, South Granville is loud. loud. They are in your face. They're talking to you. And they score points. Yeah, they score points. Reedville I mean, scores points, too. But. The thing that gets me about South Granville is they're all about the same size. They're all about the same size. They all play big inside, and they can all shoot the ball. Yes, they so, can. So I don't know how exactly you defend them. I think a team like Kansas or Farmville is definitely set up to be able to defend because they kind of because they kind of play similar, similarly. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, I'm. That's going to be a really exciting matchup. Right. Of course, Reeds will beat Hertford County. Uh, yeah. We probably. Thought differently, but yeah. I'm telling you, Breon Pass is playing for something. I didn't pick against special. I didn't, I didn't pick against Breon Pass. I picked against you picked Reasonable. against Reasonable, yeah. Yeah, I just thought Hereford County. They seemed like last year they were a good team. They were going to be. They did get to the fourth round. Yeah, last year it too. seemed like they were going to be back again. I mean, it just seemed like kind of like that would how it would be. Just, but just ran to a draw, in my opinion. Especially obviously. after they beat first flight to end the season as well. They that is to, true. Yeah. They didn't get to the third yeah. round, so. Yeah. Um, Hereford's yeah. still a young team. They're gonna. They're gonna. I think they'll be back again next year at some around this point in the season. I think they'll be in, in the in the hunt again. Yeah, and then of course you know Eastern Wayne. Uh, they went down this Saturday against Southern Durham. Uh, game went about well, uh, went a little different than we thought. You know they jumped out to a big lead and was the case because the foul trouble and then Southern it was Durham a, does Southern what Durham does what they does what they do. But Eastern Wayne was hanging in there yeah. for a while, but ultimately. Like as as yeah. the kids say, Ricky Counts in the fourth is just di- he's just different. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So uh, what more does he have to do? 
Yeah. This kid is just Well, he has D1 off. I mean, that is true. What more does this kid have to do uh, for a specific school that, I don't know, is like, I mean, on I my think, shirt? I think they offered him. I Did think they, they offered him. Well, they 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 need so like, I, I just they need a DeAndre Jordan this dude. Yeah, keep, I, I don't keep know. the door like with the chair in the door, you know. Make sure he signs on the door. Yeah, I'm just messing. I'm yeah, just, I'm yeah, I, fun. yeah. I, I, that kid Ricky Counts is unbelievable and underseeded Southern yeah. team. They're number ten um, team. Well, I mean you're number ten because you finished second in the conference, and Northwood was the number two seed. Well, I would I, I, honestly, I would just hate it for the people on that side of the draw. Oof. Yeah. Um, you well, just, now it's, it's going to be Northwood versus uh, Southern Durham again. The rematch, the conference rematch yeah. Yeah. for all the marbles going to regionals on the line. Yeah. I think that's going to be. Well, actually, uh, Northwood was number three seed. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, number two was New Hampshire. New Hampshire right. over Eastern Wayne took them out. But we we got to also shout out for the one time for the Eastern Wayne seniors for Wesley, for Devin Brown, for DB Darius Best. Uh, Desmond Vaughn, of course, just committed to play at what, what is it, Methodist? Football? Yeah. Uh, and they they they're going to be yeah. a very different team next year. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, those most guys. Most of their team is graduating. Yeah. So for the people who need to have big summers, Xavier Hardy and JJ Murray, those yeah. two right there, and then Julian Silvestri and Albert Brown, Julian Silvestri, who played a little bit in that West Brunswick game, right. is going to have to have a big big summer too. Well, that would be their main core for next year, but they're going to be so different. Yeah. It's going to be weird seeing them next year. Yeah, there. I mean, it's going to be weird not having Wesley Case around Wayne County. I mean, he's been one of the most popular players in Wayne County for a long time. I mean, Everybody his, brother, his brother Landon used to work at the YMCA, and he was very popular at the YMCA. Probably had some of the best four vision I've ever seen from a point guard. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be different for Eastern Wayne next year. I mean, it's a new era of players coming in, basically. But hopefully we can get Wes and Devin to the next next level as well. They will both be at the event as well. Yeah, they'll both be at the WJG Sports Classic. Devin so. played great in the playoffs. Yeah. you got to give it to him. That yeah. kid, he, he realized he's a bully. Yeah, yeah. Devin's starting to realize who he is, and I think – I think it's going to help him. Yeah, I think he's I think he's definitely a D2 type of, type of big man. But at least talent-wise, definitely. Yeah. But – Obviously, uh, um, they, they bow now out. Now, of course, uh, last there's only one team left in the WJG Sports that we haven't talked about. And I was at that game. Princeton, the Princeton, North Edgecombe. What's up, Princeton, man? North Edgecombe. Let's of course, talk about it. North Edgecombe is the house Montrez Harold built. Uh, they are really, really talented bunch. Deshaun Edwards had a big game. Smooth Sharp had 17 points. He could, he shot the ball well. They shot they shot the three ball very well. The Warriors uh, they. They sp- spread the floor, like to go five out, and they and like Trey told us, he North Edgecombe just goes out there and hoops, yeah. and it's a good and I like and I'm, I like it's it's a gift and a curse thing, but when you go out and you execute the right way and you got you got shot creators like they have, right. they have a good shot of this thing. But as for Princeton, uh, it was great to see Tyree Smithley back out there. He yeah. scored seven of their first nine points, but did not score the rest of the game. Uh, they they hung in there for a while. Obviously, North Edgecombe got off to they had a ruckus crowd out there. They they went out. They go they went go crazy out there. Yeah, um, yeah it was hot. That's <laughs> what I heard. Yeah, Edgecombe yeah. County hoops just had a great year. But to continue on Princeton, uh, they hung in there for a while. They made a couple plays to stay in the game early in the first half. Yeah. Aiden Taylor, there was a play he made where he literally sprinted the length of the floor, dove for loose ball. Tossed it to Nation for an and one. Uh, Nation had a great game. He had 25 points. That kid is only he's only a sophomore, folks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nation, I think he, towards the end of the year, I think he really realized how special he can be. And this summer is going to be huge for him as well. I think this summer he's going to prove that he should be um, – he wasn't even ranked in the top 50 of his class. I think this summer he's going to prove that he should have been at least top 25. Wow, that's a big one. I think that's. I think that'd be. Yeah, I think that'd be great for Nation. I think because uh, his experience with Garner Road will very well, very much help. Because right. uh, of course, being built built, by being built by design is good. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a um, but obviously, uh, we got to shout out Justin Wood, Ring Jay Wood. He's our. Yeah. He's our. He's like our favorite player. I think. Yeah, I guess. Jay Wood is cool, man. That's that's what I do. He's, he's love a, he's, Justin, man. He's, Justin, he's a Justin fun. Wood he's Green. a fun kid. Very self aware. Very good at uh, trash talking with his teammates. <laughs> 
Very, very, very good, very good kid. He also um, supports us too, so yeah. we appreciate your, your support yeah. of us. He also he's a poet. He's also a poet too. He's yeah, that's he's right. Poem wrote for class. That's so awesome. A poet. I like well. it. But uh, Justin is the only senior they have, right? Uh, which means Jah- everybody else. Jaheem will be back. Getting Jaheem back. Uh, I think Nation next, Tyrese. Yeah. I think next year. Hunter Bailey. Next year, they should be in a favorite. Ponytail Potts. One, one, yeah, Pony, Pony <laughs> Ethan Express. Ethan Potts, the Pony Express. Ponytail. Yeah, I, I think next year, they should easily be uh, one of the top four teams looking at that state title next year. For that 1A East. Out of the 1A East, yeah. I, I would definitely yeah. agree with that. Yeah. They can get a good influx from middle schools as well. They can really make a run at this thing next right. year. Um, um, of course, you were at Conley as well before you went to. Yes. Princeton. And the Conley girls. This time, more convincingly, they won 66-44 over Southern Durham. By the way, that North Edgecombe Princess score was 70 to 53 North Edgecombe. Right. Uh, but the Connolly girls, 29-0. They are on to face the Jacksonville Cardinals who, and the number one, arguably, arguably the number one senior in the North Carolina, Kennedy Todd Williams, the UNC commit. Uh, she is ridiculous. I can't. Savannah Rivers, Savannah Rivers isn't. Is she's a junior. Junior. Ooh. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. She, oh, but she's different too. She's different too. Yeah, yeah, uh, but our, I say arguably because of course there's Argan Pool as yeah, well, who's yeah. also a UNC yeah, committed yeah, yeah. Southeast Raleigh. But yeah. Kennedy Ty Williams and Kelly Luck and Mia Tucker, they are a great se- senior trio for Jacksonville. Yeah. All of them score uh, at least 14 points a game, I think. Right. They all they all average like at least three or four steals a game. Right. They play ridiculous defense, but Jenna Wooden, unsigned senior prospect guard for Colony, has been their rock for a long time. Right. Uh, she's she's going to they have a challenge, but if anyone can do it, she does it, she does it all for Colony. Well, the great thing for them is they'll be home. Yes, that they, is they that's will be huge. Home. That's Jacksonville huge. will have to come an hour up the road, hour and a half, I think. Hour and a half. Hour and a half up the road. It's not a terrible drive, but still. It's, it's not a terrible drive, but, I mean, it's always something different about getting off that bus. You know, sometimes it's it's really good because you get, this, you get to pump each other up, have this underdog mentality, and sometimes it can leave you a little drained. Um, but an hour and a half isn't terrible, so you might can still keep that good energy in yeah. the bus throughout the bus ride and get off the bus and be ready to go but, all business. Yeah, absolutely. I also cannot mention this without talking about another young lady who is different, and that's Kyle Silver, yeah. the freshman yeah. guard. She had 23 of her 28 just in the first half. She was hitting threes. She was getting to the basket. She was strapping up on defense. Yeah. This young lady's here to stay for a while. She won. She won at the middle school level in year one. They went undefeated. They're undefeated through the third round of playoffs. Yeah, she's, she's just tough. She's, she's tough. tough. And also, uh, cousins with T.J. Edwards. Yeah, our guest of the show. Yeah, um, and we love T.J. Yeah. Uh, but Kyla and Jen are gonna have to have big games. Obviously, they also need contributions from Carson Fleming, their sophomore shooter. Uh, Alicia Anderson, who's their do it all energy energy girl, she does everything. We should have, we should have asked Trey about this because Trey is really, he saw Jackson girl. Yeah, he, yeah, it's true. And uh, she made her return. Kennedy Todd Williams made her return. That's correct. Yeah, that's right. She was injured early in the year. Yeah. She came back. But like I said, Alicia Anderson, Trinity Nichols, uh, Lauren Wiles, those last two of the soft, play softball predominantly, but they're also big for this basketball team. They need to have big games. Uh, Coach Sean Moore has a seven, seven, seven man rotation, so they they're gonna play, he's gonna play a short rotation, but all of them could do a lot of really good things, and they're a well coached bunch. I think we're in for a great game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, uh, also going on in Pitt County last. Saturday was Farmville Central Girls once again. And boys, but... Well, we'll talk about the girls. We'll, we'll ladies first. Girls. We are, yes, ladies first. Uh, uh, Farmville Central Girls, they rolled over... East Duplin. East Duplin, yeah. East Duplin. Really good East Duplin team, too. Yeah, I mean, East Duplin is really one, really a good team. Uh, it's just Farmville Central. It's like you said, con- congrats on like, a great season. but uh, Goodbye. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. that's exactly... Well, now, you have North. They would be I'm, playing North and North, who went on the road and beat a un- St. Paul. Previously uh, undefeated St. Paul's. So like, North and North? No, don't. You're good. Congratulations on your great season. But. Oh, you're not going to do this now, are you? Uh, oh, come on. All right, well, let me still give you 
the, the breakdown. I'm I think sure. it'll be a fun game. Okay. Okay. I think it'll be a fun right. game. Junius Junius pulled up to to St. Paul's, so he yeah. was at he was there to see. It came down to the final seconds. Of course, he pulled up to St. Paul's. He's from Fayetteville. He's yeah, of course. No, one that. Of course, he pulled up there, saw a great game, and came down to the final seconds. Yeah. Uh, I think Ashanti Lynch made it, the go ahead shot. Yeah. Um, and she's gonna have to be big in this game if they want a chance. Kanaja Taylor and Emanita Lynch and uh, Integrity McPhail also have to play big games. Yeah, but for Farmville, it's their it's their it's their bigs who can pass ridic- their ridiculous passing bigs. Amaya Joyner was one of the best sophomores in the state. Yeah, it, yeah. Carmen, unsigned senior who's gotten JUCO looks. Janaya Foskey, the junior big who also does it all for them. It's so, gonna be a good game. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, but I still. Janaya will be a Kalen Bates. I still think Farmville Central wins by twenty five. Twenty five. Whoa. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say they pull away in the fourth. I'm gonna say they pull away early on in the fourth. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say. I got Farm go by ten. Ten. Ooh, I think that's good. Ten. ten. I think North and North is really good. I think they're really good too, but I do know Farm Central is different. great. They're different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think when it's all said and done, Amaya Joyner, we're gonna be looking at her as one of the greatest girls basketball players to come from the two five two. From, from Pitt County, definitely. From she, the two five. Oh, yeah, she's... Yeah, I mean, as a sophomore. Now, when I saw her, I was like, wow, she's a sophomore? <laughs> I saw her last year, and I was like, whoa, this girl is a freshman, and in year one, they were undefeated. Yeah. Just um, like, it, they, it's kind of similar to what this Conley team, as of right now, is yeah. doing. When they got a freshman could, beast. Could you, of, could you imagine if Farwell Central girls go undefeated, well, I mean, if they f- finish up and win this title... And then Conley comes back and wins the title as well, and be just like South Central and Farmville Central, whatever well, shit for the boys. Man, that would be a great debate to have, wouldn't it? Yeah, that that. But anyway, uh, but we have to. We gotta get their props. Gotta get their props. Here's what here's what I'll say about Farm. Here's what I say about Farmville Central versus North Lamar. I'm gonna say North Lamar keeps it close going into the fourth. I'm gonna say like 13 points. Okay. 13, 14. Okay, so it's and not gonna fourth, sound like. And then that. and then Farmville Central, they're gonna hit a. 10, 8 to 10, nothing run to start before. Game will be over from there. Okay. That, that's that's my point. I think it will be a closer game than that. Yeah. Because I, mean, I think highly of Coach Woolley and North and North. I, I think they're a really good team. I think they're really Their starting five can time. compete with just about everybody. Yeah, I think I think they got really good at the wrong time. Because uh, I, I mean, Farmville Central, I just can't see anybody beating them. I, that's, from, I, I from feel East of North Carolina. I feel the same way for probably um, a good four to five years right now. I mean, ooh. you look at it like their middle that's school it. girls program is like, and like I said program. about Janai, their JV team him. is undefeated right now. Like the coach is wondering how does he play all of these players that they have. He's got a seven. He's got a seven man rotation too. Yeah, I know. Obviously, Janai will be in Rashad Rashia Spade is the other person I forgot to mention. Uh, she's gonna. She's a great shooter for them. She's gonna. She usually when she shoots well, there is no chance of beating them. Right. So and of course on the other side of the two A East girls bracket is uh, Kinston. Okay. They, they were able to survive all that Croatan could give them. Overtime game, yes. Yeah, maybe they, maybe Croatan heard me and uh, said yeah. that it's not goodbye quite yet. You know we're, what? We're going. We're coming. They uh, they are a great team. Yeah. I said this all year. When I saw them against Southside, I was like, this team could make some noise a little bit. Yeah. Um, naturally, um, Kenston being Kenston pulled it out. And now Kenston will have to travel three and a half hours down the road. To the triad. To Randleman. Um, where I Can they beat Randleman? Yes. yes. Where I think their season will end. Though. But you, oh, oh, you think it will be, you yep, think it's yep, game over. Yeah, give me Randleman. Oof. Well, yeah, I'm gonna make a case for Kinston winning. They're gonna yeah. need uh, Anzario Cobb to be. Here's the thing: when they started to feed Anzario Cobb, and when she starts to make her layups, they're a tough team to beat. I think you. I mean, I'm sure you agree. Yeah, no. But really. ultimately, going three and a half hours to random is tough. Yeah. But if That's I know any I mean. team that can do it, it's a team coached by Chris Bradshaw with yeah. that senior laden group because it's. Just about all seniors. Yeah, I mean, in pretty much all the seniors. At least nice. rotation, main rotation. It would be nice to see them get back to the regionals, I think, for the... It would be like the third or fourth consecutive year. Uh, yeah, third or fourth consecutive or year. At least like, like third in the last four years or something. Something like See, that. they went last year. They, they got upset by Andrews one year. 
before regionals. That's why. Yeah. Think. So yeah, it's been three. If they were to go this year, I think it would be. I think it would be three years. Okay. Straight. Okay. I know. Yeah. I, I know. I covered two of them. Yeah. And, and I was. Yeah, we were so at last year's third. regional against. Yeah. So that Maybe was fun. third. Might be four. I don't know. And, but either way, they can. You know, they consistently win. Yeah. Um, so yeah, give me Randall though. Um, I know you'll probably take the kid, take Kingston, or we would take Kingston. Uh, I'm gonna I'm go Kingston by one. I'll go Kingston by one. You know what? Okay. If I, I'll, I'll, I've, I've been flip flopping on this pick, um, but I'm, I'll, I'll go with the K. Why not? Okay. Okay. Um, so now, of course, also in Kingston. Speaking of a game that will be in Kingston, Dontre Styles and Isaac Parsons and them that took care of business. St. Paul's. Great season, Goodbye. yeah. The the buy was was good. Um, the buy was good. Uh, See, if I said that, you would have gotten mad at me. I mean, yes, you would. You know, you would. Anyway, um, but it was it was like it was a like what fourteen point win I think. Yeah, that? something like that. I believe yeah. it was like I, I can't remember. It was like sixty eight fifty four or something. Yeah, like something something like that. Something pretty simple. I mean, but they was, they took care of business. They set up. Now uh, they will be at home versus Farmville Central, who also took care of business against Thomasville Ledford. Thomasville Ledford. Who Ledford beat Southwest Edgecombe in awesome, round one. Who had an awesome playoff run. But the bye was good. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, this time you can say it, because Farmville beat him by 35. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is the game. I don't people know, likes to Kinson likes to play with their food. That's the one difference between Farmville and Kingston. Farmville will eat you. Just eat you alive. Man, and that's what they want. And the Bears have been poked with their playoff season, too. So. Yeah. Kingston, on the other hand, they're kind of poked around the field a little bit. They'll I don't think they're going to play around against Farmville. I don't think they're going to play around against Farmville Central, though. I don't think. I think they, they, have, they have this thing of where they can rise to the occasion. You can see that. They, they're here. Yeah. I think, that, I think they're gonna be locked in. So I think they're gonna be locked in. They were locked. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. But the thing is, when you have three shot creators like Teal, Wright, and Smith, we've been talking about them all. Uh, now the thing about that man is just obviously I think, it is hard to imagine them shooting set twenty-seven or thirty-three combined together. That's so tough. Like, the, like for me, like to imagine like another the team having having that happen again. Or where the thing all, is, I think they can do it again. That's they crazy. can, but it's just like you, you won't do that again and again, will you? It's like man. No, that's exactly how I'm, I'm like they can do it, but like are they? If they really like if they, they do it team, again. Any like, other team, I'd be like, nah, that won't happen again. But this team, you'd be like, they might be able to do that. Again. Yeah, it's like, but they shouldn't. But, but they might. might. <laughs> So so uh, yeah, um, this is a tough one. I'm not even gonna make a prediction. I'm not either. I, I love I love the kids on both sides. I'm not gonna do that to either. Yeah, team. I, I, I'm just gonna say you guys have you guys that go to that game have fun because you're gonna get a treat. Yeah, I have no those idea. kids are good friends with each other too. But when they're on the floor, they're gonna go at yeah, each other. No, that that's the great thing. They're gonna be competitive and fight and, 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 and afterwards they're gonna go get something to eat together. <laughs> I don't know, so, right away. Right away, so, eventually. Yeah. Okay, eventually. Maybe, maybe they'll see each other like an AAU tournament or, 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 or well, passing. They're probably, they're probably, they're probably, they're good, they're good kids. They're good. I don't know, man. I think they're good kids. You put me out of the playoffs and stop me from getting the ring, we might can't talk for a while. That is, no, that's a good point. We, 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 we might gotta see, you might, you might can't see me till, till the 4th of July. <laughs> till Independence Day, when we can let it go. All right, he, but the key, keys to victory, keys to victory for Kinston to keys get to revenge. Victory. To get revenge, I know the big three under eighty combined. Combined, hold the big three under eighty. Come out and try to figure out a way to let the other guys beat you. Do not so let it be Samaj, Justin, or Baby T. T. Make it be Rache Owens. Or Leonte Moore, or Ja, or Dar- Ja. Let Dante it be Mishu. somebody else. Anybody else. If if Josh not Sean, number Dasha, one, number eleven, number I I forgot Justin number one. Justin was number five, right? Yeah, five. Okay, so those three numbers. Do not let those three numbers. Don't beat let them you. breathe. 
Do not don't let as him. In the, don't even the, let him in the gym. Next. As soon as the ball is scored, you should be able. The next thing that should be on Kiss's mind is where's Justin? Where's T? Where's Samaj? Where's, where's Samaj? Find them, and we're gonna put we're gonna hold them all night long. They also need they need Jeremy Dixon. They yeah. need Jeremy Dixon big. Yeah. They need Chance. I know. I, here's what I do know. I know Will London and Cardi and Coots are gonna play. As hard as they possibly can. Yeah, but they, I know that. They need them to produce too. They had, they got they some of them, they just got <laughs> each produce like six, seven, eight points each. Yeah. Um the keys to Fargo, I mean, it's pretty simple, right? The keys to Fargo is just to keep doing what you've been doing. That's really, yeah. Yeah. Keep finding ways to free up Justin, keep finding ways to free up Samaj, keep finding ways to be to free up T. Also, last that, year's playoff game, Dontre Styles got in foul trouble. Yeah. Um, and it hindered Dontre, them most yeah. of the game. Dontre has to stay out of foul trouble. Yeah. In the first match, he Dontre, actually did a good Dontre job. Dontre is going to be the best player on the floor. Yes, he regardless. is. Regardless. Sure. So, the biggest thing is he's the best player in the, the state for, for, for our money. Yeah. I mean, there's for a, our money. To, to me, our money. To me, there's only one player better than Dontre in the entire state. I'm, I'm is, it, is it Josh? Oh, yeah, it's Josh. Okay. Josh. Josh oh, Thomas. you came around, okay? Because you, because you, you said it was Don Trez who's the best. Hey, you know, sometimes I get a little hyperbole, you know. Okay, but here's I, I will te- I will say though, in the game against Moravian, Don Trez was the best player on the floor. Yeah, yeah, he had thirty and ten. Yeah, I mean, that's not that's not. So how about is Don Trez is the? But best. Josh is still the best player in the state. I Don, think, Don so. Trez is the best player east of Ra- I mean Raleigh and East. That's that? okay. That's how about that? That's what I'll say. That's. I don't think you're gonna get any arguments. Yeah. And he had. Even if he is that, the thing is, just for some reason, I can imagine Farmville Central shooting that good again. Because the that, one, that's just the problem with this. I mean, because they're so mean, ridiculous. Like, and they just play free. Rutherford just says go play. <laughs> in my heart, I feel like Kenson is the better team, but the three players that they have are better than the. After everyone better than everyone, everyone of those three players is better than anyone after Don Trez and Kinson's roster. So you have. So you're, talk, you're saying T. Justin and Samaj are better yeah. than everyone not named Don Trez. So okay. when you have that much of a talent gap between. This is not two, a knock on anybody. Yeah, it's no, just no, 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 no. They've no. been ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, maybe Samaj and Isaac are right there. I would say, I would say that personally. Yeah, I, I think they're right there. I mean, I think they're close. But then it's like when you have the second, third, and fourth best players on the floor, and then you have the first and fifth. You know, it, it's going to be hard to beat that. Somehow. I can't pick this game, man. I just, yeah. I can't do it, dude. I can. I, I'm sure you feel this way too. I feel like I, I want to say Kenson gets the win in the second in the second game. I feel like I'm. Gonna, I want to say that. Um, I think after the final such a game, they've renewed their defensive focus. Yeah, you I mean, saw what they did to Goldsboro. Yeah, you know, they, they right after that. Game. Yeah, um, they're taking it out. Of either way, just, I, either way, I feel like whoever wins this game will be going to the state championship. Yeah, we've. I think we most people will have said this, but I'm going to continue to say it. South Granville will have their say in this, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I don't leave them out of this because they are very much. South Granville, South Granville is very good, but defensive defensive wise, they don't have. I don't think their defense is good enough to stop a three like. But their offense them. is good enough and to I don't beat think, anybody. I don't think their offense is as good as Kansas defense. Interesting. I think Kansas defense can hold them. To a point where they're playing in the six. Kinston can definitely strap up. I'll tell you that. I yeah, think it's going to be a real grind. South Granville, the only way that they would be able to beat Kinston, in my mind, is if they can figure out how to force Kinston to play a game in the 80s. Make them, oh, speed them up. Speed them up. I don't know if that's possible with a Kinston team. Like, Isaac, Farville, I Isaac think they Carson. can get away. I think Farville can match that speed, but that's the thing. When they, if, they, if that was the key for, for South Granville, if they would want to beat Farville Central. Is just simply stop the big three. First Those of all, they got to get that Breon pass and all the levels because they are. Yeah, Breon is Breon is tough. All of them just got the two thousand points, I think. Yeah, so, yeah they, they got they got a we, tough matchup. This this two A East these two games I think are the two best of any division. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, 
Like it's two sets of games. Yeah. The only other one that the I would argue is, is the 3A West, I think. Or 3A West girls. The question is what happens once the one the once two A East is decided for the boys. Does anybody from the two A West, aka if Forest Hills gets there again, yeah, do I, they have a chance? Yeah, if Forest Hills is still alive, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. If, if Forest Hills is there What do you mean they're still alive? They're I'm always just, alive. Just, what do you mean? I'm just making it sure. It's true. I know sometimes I lose the West. I think you're a lot more connected in the West. You know, you got the, you got the people and the politics in the West, man. You man, stop. No, no. Well, you eat now. That's, that's your area. But, um... I try. Yeah. Not, or at least I... I I'm, Forest you know. Hills, I mean, considering everything, they haven't really gotten a lot of coverage. I don't... I don't know what... Here's more. the thing. They did... Here's what they did lose from last year. They lost two of their best players from last year's team. Yeah, but they still went like 30 and 0. That's the thing. They, they're so good and well coached. Like Coach Saad, as I say, he's a great coach. They're, they no doubt they're, they're going to be back. The 30 and 0, I, nobody is talking about them. Yeah, they need... They, they, they're they going to have their say. Now, I, I'm right. sure there's going to be somebody like who works closer to that area or whatever. But I ain't seen them on... I haven't seen no Forest Hill tape from any of the pl- from any of the places who cover the state, supposedly. I haven't well, seen it. Forest Hills, Forest Hills is going to have their set. Yeah, I think that they're they're a well coached team. They're going to play hard. I mean, you they're talk about they've been to the well. state title game what, four straight years now. They won. If they, see, if they, they won in eighteen and lost last year to Fargo, obviously. Right. They will beat Green Central by two. Right, so I mean, this is a team that's been that's been to the state title game two years in a row, and I haven't heard anything about them. How are they keeping this a secret? Who is telling the media company that they media companies that they can't come and cover the games? Why is there no film? Huh? The bottom bottom line is they will have. Right, I'm typing Forest Hills right now. See see what comes up. Do we even do? Is there even a Forest Hills? Let's see, Forest Hills basketball. Forest Hills, there, there's got to be something on Forest Hills because they they're ridiculous. I mean, let me see what we got. Force. Anyway, while he does that, obviously, uh, it's been a it was a crazy third round Saturday. Like Joel Bryan said when we talked, we talked throughout the day because he was at both the games I was at. Uh, he said third round Saturday is the okay, best. Okay, there's some four uh, stuff. There is some four North Carolina stuff. High School basketball. What? Yeah, range man films, hoop diamonds. I'm gonna make sure I go back, go and watch this. This from this. Yeah, this is all from this year, two days ago, 17 hours sure, ago. Are we sure this is the... Stream two weeks ago wait, by Ken Hills. Wait, are we sure? That might not be... Uh, that might not be it. Well, just make... Just just do further research when you can, but... Uh, to continue my point... Uh, Forest Hill versus Park Vista? No, nah, that's... No. Okay, that's definitely not... That's a different one. Um, yeah. But Joel Bryant said to, to me uh, yesterday, or on Saturday, that... Third round Saturday is the best day in high school basketball in the state. And I actually agree. It was wild. Garner and Millbrook both went down. <laughs> Lumberton is on this amazing run right now. Obviously, they beat South Central in round one of one of my teams, of course. Uh, they, they're, continuing to, they're continuing their march. They just went to Garner and beat them. Yeah, Four Hills doesn't have any content out from like this year. Like anywhere really? on YouTube. I legit looked all the way down on YouTube. The last thing that I was talking about was them in the state t- final game last year. That's but, crazy. But they'll have their set. You know that. But to continue yeah, they, my... They, they must not be letting no media people in. They're like, I'm not, I can't, you can't tell them. Matt Sides keeping the secret us, from us. No, you, can't, you can't tell us what's happening here. But Coach Sides is a real good coach. He's, yeah, he he's is. He's got the boys. He he's got the boys right I'm, I'm just playing. I just feel like, you know, when you got excellence going on, you know... They have been doing kind of what Farmville's been doing for the past three years. Yeah, about the same time, man. Yeah, about the same time. And they've been so, winning, too. They won in, like I said, yeah, they, they, they got a state title on their belt. It's just like, man, you know, let's, let's I don't know, man. Yeah, but they got a challenge. They're playing Mountain Heritage in the fourth round. That's yeah. going to be a tough, yeah. tough game. Yeah. Because um, they have a lot of size and a lot of kids who can score the ball. But um, to continue my point on Lumberton's run and just how crazy Saturday was, Garner again is a high seed. They seem to they seem to not like they seem to lose as a high seed a lot. I hate it for him because those That's those your boys are, too. Yeah, those are those are my guys. And Coach Bombs is one of my favorite coaches in the state. No bar none. It's just it seems like when they get a high seed, like against South Central A team, and I think last year as well as a high seed. This year against Lumberton. Lumberton 
has been on an incredible run. Obviously, I think they're playing at Hoggard tomorrow. I don't know. I mean, that, that to me sounds Hoggard like maybe, it's just, maybe you're just getting bad matchups. That is true. Lumberton beat Apex Friendship, too. So, honestly, yeah. honestly, you shouldn't be surprised at this. Because if Lumberton beat that team with Jaden Bellotti and Nick Farrar, yeah. two seniors who yeah. have had great careers... Uh, obviously, you know Nick's going to NC State. Yeah. Jalen's going to play at the next level, too, because he's a beast. Right. I mean, uh, so, it, it, you know, it's it's hard to say. The thing about being a one seed is you're going to face a nine or eight. That's in, really good, too. In, in your third round, if you make it to the third round. And, and I mean, a lot of times, with the way the playoff seeding is work, you honestly might have a tougher matchup than someone who's playing, say, a 12 like a three, or 13 seed. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I've seen that a lot. Yeah. I, so it, it's, it's just one of those things where when it, when it comes to being a high seed, it, it doesn't necessarily matter as much as people don't like to make it seem like. Yeah, the home court advantage is very important in the playoffs because kids sometimes can get very intimidated and turned off by the moment and by the crowd and hostility and not having anybody, not having enough people there to kind of, you know, blare that out. But at the same time, man, you're looking at sometimes a one, as a one seed, you're facing the best team who didn't win a conference championship. Okay. And their conference was tougher than your conference. So they're more battle tested. Or they have... Hamilton is definitely battle tested. Or look at Henderson Collegiate versus like East, East Carteret. Oh my Henderson goodness. Henderson Collegiate got... A low seed because they started off the season playing the toughest schedule in the state. They piled up a bunch of losses, got in the conference, dominated the conference. They did the, have that one forfeit loss that kind of ruined it for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So you get you get that you you beat you, you run through your conference, get into the state playoffs. You as a six seed. Yeah, you're going three hours down the road, and it's going to be tough. Like ten seed. Henderson Collegiate. Oh wait, was Washington? Was Washington was. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Henderson was. Six. Yeah. Okay, my fault. Yeah, Henderson. I mean, Henderson Collegiate as a six seed. Now you're going three hours on the road to East Carteret. Yeah, that can matter. But, I mean, everyone knew that Henderson Collegiate was probably the most talented team in the 1A East. You saw what they did, too, right? Yeah, they put. They, they beat them 71 by, points for staff. Yeah, beat them by 50. Jeez, you dude. beat that team. I, I think, thought East, man. East Carteret, I think they're a good team. They're a great team. But I mean, with the way the playoffs are set up and it being a computer. It takes out some, Yeah, it takes out some of the because let's let's be real here. If Henderson Collegiate was uh say an NCISAA school going up against um I mean and they had that type of playoff like committee or whatever, everyone knows that Henderson Collegiate would have been like one, maybe the two, maybe the three C. But at least the, some more up there. Right. Yeah. And the, and that's why I like the computer system better. It puts you. It, it 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 rewards you for having a good season all around. There's a mix of strength of schedule, quality wins, that bad is. losses. Yeah. It all goes into this big system, and it comes out. And most of the time, I think it's correct. It's not the NCISAA outside of a couple of misses. Didn't like the top seeds were fine for the most part. It's just that after it's that, it was that ugh. back end. But after that's that, the problem. That's the problem. The NCHSA playoff system, I don't think back end teams get less of a fair draw. You know exactly, like, that's the thing. You know exactly what you have to do. You have to put together a pretty tough schedule and you have to win all your games. Period, point blank. I think that that's probably the best system that you're going to get because you take away a lot of It's not of perfect, the, but it's not terrible. Take away a lot of the posturing that you get of, well, I know who this. I know this team has two players who are going to go play at a Division One school. Mm-hmm. We're going to put them ahead of this team who has 21, 25 wins and one loss, even though this team has lost ten games, ten quality games. Instead, you get it to where it says, "Hey, if you are so much of a better team, go on the road and prove it." Well, I would prefer that system over something that is handpicked and there can be bias put into it. I see your point. Yeah. But obviously, uh, we, like we, but the thing is, the teams so far, for the most part, have proven who's better and who isn't. You know? Yeah. I they, mean, you they've, look, gone, they've gone out and played the games. Let's look at the 1A East. Okay. 1A East, 
You have the one seed is still alive. North Edge Home. Two seeds still alive. Edenton. Six seeds still alive. And Henderson Collegiate. They beat They're, the three seed. They beat. Who's the, who is North Edge Home playing? The They're playing Granville Central. Number Granville five Central. Seed. Who was the five seed? One, two, six, five. That's not, te- that's not terrible. That's not a terrible draw right there. That is pretty much. And the six seed had to beat the three seed. The five seed had to beat the four seed. I don't think that you can get something that's going to be much better than that. You look at two-way East, the one, two, three, four seed, all in. Three-A East, the one, the four, the three, three. and the ten seed are still alive. And those the three and ten, ten seed are conference teams. Yeah. So the ten seed would have technically have been probably a Number top three. five seed had it not been a, had it been a had conference it, champion. Yeah. I'm just saying, it looks like the system works when you don't look at it through the microscope of one individual incident. I'm, I'm with you. You're okay. Trying, you're, you're, okay. Speak, you're speaking I'm the just, I'm just putting. I'm just putting the points out there because I, people I keep, got you. Yeah. I got you. I'm look. I'm. I do think that if you win a conference, if you win a conference championship, you do deserve to be rewarded with two home games. Yeah. I think teams. Yeah, teams have gotten that. Yeah. I. It, it, you, can argue, you can argue, you can argue, twice, you can argue and be mad about like your conference being weak. So like, how do you deserve two playoff games at home? But it's like when you, a team, it's not like a team can choose a conference year by year. Nice. You are putting them to a conference for four years. So if you're in a weak conference, you can't opt out of the conference and then go to a better, stronger conference like Princeton. They've had a really good year. Their four losses are all the teams who were really good teams. But all of their wins, because of their conference being weak, you get 12 wins. But you also have a weak schedule, so now you're eight seed, and now you have to play two games at, at home. You, you, you get two games at home, but you have to go to North Edge. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, 26 and 2. I don't know. We went down we went down a rabbit hole there because of that Lumberton Garner thing. But, yeah. Uh, another one I wanted to talk about, which, by the way, you, you spoke so eloquently on that. That's what yeah. Thanks, man. Um, but another one we want to talk about is uh, your favorite player, Carter Witt. Again, proving it again. Leesville Road knocked off Millbrook. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was surprised, too. Uh, I know you think Millbrook. Yeah. Uh, but here's what makes it worse. I, I, hate to, I hate to make this worse, but they had two free throws for the win and missed both. Yeah. And Difference between being and Kids, make, shoot. Like a thousand free throws a day if you have to. Yeah. I saw a Division One team yesterday go eight of thirty at the free throw line, and they lost. <laughs> Work on your free throws; they are free. Free that, throws, turnovers, and rebounds win your games. Yeah, especially this time of year, free throws are free. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. You they boy, also lose your games. Yes, that is true. That's true. Um. Obviously. Uh. Obviously. Well, Shout out last post superhero Will Fuck, man. Yeah, we still give it up. I'm he's still he's point. still a junior and he's still got time. Yeah, he's, he's a junior. He's still last post superhero to you. Yeah. He's he's you still he's he's really your favorite player. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love post players, man. The post is, is, is dying. It ain't dead yet. Will Felton, it wrong. The Will the Will Felton the tires what got you. Yeah. He's like he got the the, the black Will Felton the, shows up. And just no, jerseys, no and shorts, no sleeves, <laughs> no knee pads, no. Yo, he's got on mid socks, not high socks. Not even. Like, but the real reason Jalen shows up in you know, hoops. I love kids who just show up in hoop. Let your game be loud, not your. You know time. who showed up in hoop the last couple weeks? Even though Millbrook did lose, Jalen McCoy just went yeah. off the last yeah. couple weeks. Yeah, and he deserved that offer from what was it Georgia Southwestern? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, deser- he sure. deserves that offer for sure. Uh, but of course, Leesville led by Carter Witt, the junior guard. Yes. Yeah. Some people believe is the best guard in the class. Arguably, obviously, that's up for debate for people. That, man, for y'all, yeah, it'd be hard to take him over Bobby Pettiford, man. Yeah, and honestly, Bobby Pettiford had some moments where he looked like Tyler Lawson to me because it was just like they were. I scoring, actually like that comparison. They would score it, they take it out, pull it out, and then He's boom, four, se- four yeah. seconds. Bobby's either at the rim or either it's already it's a pass for a three or something. Yeah, you know? but that, that, and that's the reason why the 2021 guards. I mean, you got T, Bobby, and Carter. Yeah, I mean, hey, I was sitting down there. On the Bobby and T are on the 
Same team, I think. Same AAU team. See, I think Bobby Benford plays no. for CP3. Yeah, Bobby plays for CP3. Oh, yeah. I mean, Carter Whip plays for Team Love. No, I was talking about T, baby T. And oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carter does play for Team Love, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I was just sitting on my base and I'm looking out. And behind me, of course, was like the basketball history. And Sam Granville had maybe three conference championships up there. And were any of them like was last? I think year? I think I think it was like the last two were was the last two years I believe. So when you look at what Bobby Pettifer has done for that program, man, he has taken it. I mean, they, they put them on the map. Put yeah. three more on the map. Yeah, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, it's like he's going to be like if he stays there for next year because I know a lot of times when you have a lot of seniors graduate from a team, a lot of times they can pressure juniors to go somewhere else and play. And a better situation. I like players who stay in. I like, I like players who stay like, Players too. like Nick Farrar. Yeah. Like, that's just a big Like, um, right? you know, some people were was thinking, like, uh, Brandon Ingram would leave. But instead, he stayed and he became a Kenston legend because of that. And versus somebody like Jerry Stackhouse who left and has said just that an he, he felt he feels a little bit of animosity because he didn't get the finish. It. I mean, it's okay for. People to be upset a little bit. I mean, yeah, I they, they want to support you. They want to watch you. They want to watch you and say, "Hey, this was our guy, and he went. He's he's got it. He's gone." So, I, well, you we can't. But just, but yeah. when it comes but when it comes down to it, I think Bobby is the type of guy who is going to have that court named after him or something. They got to do something big for him. Nobody should wear number zero again. Something like that. Yeah, has his to number. For him. He's, he's, just like Amaje. Maje's number has to get retired at some point, right? Yeah, we got to – I don't know who we got to talk to in Green Bay. We got to talk to Coach David Bryan. We got to talk to Blue. We got to yeah. talk to everybody. Yeah, we got, we got Patrick that, Green, the principal. We got to talk we gotta to him. We got to put that 23 up in the rafters. Yeah, or absolutely. That, that, that kid – when you have guys like that who stay in a small town and are – Represent the, your school the right way. Yeah. High-character kids. Yeah. You, you, you were tired in numbers. You put the name on the floor or something. You do something that makes sure that that type of legacy is cemented because that's the type of stuff that keeps kids in those small communities. That's the type of stuff that makes kids be glad that they didn't go and play somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and not there's anything wrong with kids going to play elsewhere because that is a personal decision, but it's not for everybody. And it sometimes it works out for you. Sometimes it doesn't work out for you. Yeah. So you honestly, gotta be careful with that as well. But nonetheless, that's that's really good stuff. Obviously, uh, the <clears> thing, <throat> the thing we all, I can't also obviously we we kind of get off topic a couple times, but it's a, it's all good. Yeah, it's all yeah. we just we're, here's we're, the thing we're we're we talk we talk we talk a lot we talk about everything. Yeah, yeah. But we can't I can't leave Leesville Road and just say it's all just it's all Carter Witt. I mean, yeah. Chase Hocker is one of the more fearless players in the state. Well, Jalen McDonald, Jalen McDonald, uh, yeah. bounce king. That dude yeah. is. That dude's yeah, ridiculous. He's been, he's, you know, he's Scott been Martin's made play for them. Play, Scott Martin has made plays for them. Yeah. Uh, Devin Daniels, they are they're a team that can win this whole thing. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, there will be challenges out of the West. Northwest Guilford uh, is a team I see that can do it, but they have a tough matchup. Uh, North Mech has obviously been talked about a lot. North yeah, North, I think North Mech got this, though. I, I do think so, too. They're too talented. They got about like 71 players. In. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's over. Like, I don't I don't think anyone's touching that. Yeah. It would be nice to see Leesville make that run, though. It's always nice to see a team from the East do something nice, even if it is Raleigh. Triangle. <laughs> even if it is technically Raleigh. Man, man, leave Riley alone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Leave, like then you got, you got to leave Carter Witt alone for good. He heard you, bro. He, heard, he Carter Witt told me that he heard what you said, and he started ball out because Carter Witt don't even talk to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was say, when did Carter Witt start talking to you? I'm just. It was. Carter I Witt was hit kidding. You with Jack. It was like, hey, <laughs> like to tell that guy, Kai tell, Jones. Tell that guy. Tell your. Tell I'm your brother for him. Tell your brother I'm coming. For that's what Carter Witt did to you. <laughs> You think, I'm kidding. I'm you, kidding. You, you president, you, he hit you on the jack. Man, stop. And say, say, tell him I got him when he hit me on the mat. Okay, so here's the thing. What yeah. did, what did you think of his response after uh, that that tweet response? Uh, with, 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 uh, with Hart, with Hart Bailey. Bailey. What I did love, you think? I love Hart. Hart's my dude. He um he keeps it really. He's he's very much a uh, built by design head. Uh, you know. Uh, 
I mean, that's what. If Shout out Jolly competing with all, the East All Stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Craig Lebo, too. Yeah, you know, I don't really. Um, I mean, he's a kid. Honestly, I've seen because I've seen I've seen, differing, I've, seen, I've seen differing stances on this. I saw what Charles <clears throat> what Clark said about how kids should be going at adults, and I agree with that. I agree with that to a point, but at the same time, when it comes to hoop, he didn't say anything too disrespectful. I mean, he called him a clown. Yeah, that's I don't kind know. Of, that's that's kind of dis- I, I feel that's kind of disrespectful. From, Hart, like from, from, from Hart's point of view, and as an adult, I kind of feel like okay, kids probably shouldn't talk like that to adults. But I know as a kid. I was like eight, 17, 18 years old, and I just proved somebody wrong. Oh, yeah. uh, that's that's what talk that talk. I got especially when I, I think, it might have been wrong, but it was pretty funny. I mean, yeah, I got, you got to yeah, admit it was yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty funny. I mean, it was you, when good. you're a kid and you get talked about a lot, especially you got like, Carter like, does get talked about a lot in a yeah, negative connotation. Yeah, and that's that kid just goes out. That kid he's just goes one, out and gets buckets. He's one of those guys who I do. Think, I'm a Carter Wood fan. I'll tell you that. I do. He's one of the guys I do think that kind of gets hurt by being a white player in a black game. In a way, I think I think it, there's negatives and positives. I do think that there's a little bit of uh, hate thrown his way because he is kind of get a little bit of coverage that makes him kind of seem like the great white hope. Kind of like how they used to call Larry Bird and stuff like that. But, I mean, he's really good. He actually is really good. I think he's a top seven player in, in his class. Um, but then I think that there's also the – he does get a lot of a lot of hate because of that, though. Because he is good and he is – he get he does get a little bit more hype than some of the other guys. But then also you can say – But the thing is he goes out there is, and gets buggy. So yeah. And, and then part of that you can also say is because of the marketing he's in. You look at it, Bobby Pettiford, yeah, Bobby Pettiford. Bobby Pettiford is in Creed more. Uh, some, I mean, uh, Tequavion Smith is in Farmville. Uh, Don Trez is in Kinston. These are not areas that get a lot of the same type of coverage that but a Raleigh triangle, team can. Not not just Raleigh, but the Triangle in general. Right, right. The, that Triangle team can. But honestly, all I a say is just, big, go out, just go out of hoop. A lot of the Don't let big. Kid get you. Yeah, yeah. You know, I. You know, I feel for him because it, it's very hard to not say anything when people keep talking about you. That is true. Yeah, it, it, that's it, it, that's why. Really that's why. That's, why that's that's for the argument for it, it was a, a fair. It was fair to respond. He's a, he's a 16, 17 year old kid. Yeah. Like like we can't leave it to the point of. I I, I don't want to say that he should never respond. And I don't think he should respond often because these things are going to happen. You're a top-rated player. People are going to talk about you until the day you die. <laughs> and he's, and we're not. We can't just pretend like he's the one. He's the only one kid who does this. Yeah, kids no. do this. No, kids do kids this. respond. Kids yeah. respond this way. I mean, like I get, and like you said, I get if, if we were kids and somebody and they, they we I get just DMs, had a I get DMs all moment. the time about being underrated about. Uh, being counted out about being being biased, slept on, being slept on, like it happens. Kids are kids. They have they use these things to make them feel to motivate to, them. to motivate them and to also feel better about what they're doing because they are kids and they're trying to figure out the way of the world. You know they can't. And that's not a bad thing at all. Yeah, no, no. So I, I think for him, um, just be smart, be careful. Um, people are going to feel how they feel about you one way or another. And this is just for every kid. This isn't just for Carter. Yeah, no, no. I mean, be smart. Get people are going to feel about how you feel about you the way they're going to feel about you out of the way. Um, there's nothing you can really do to change it. People are people who look at you and say that you're not good, they're never going to change their opinion. People who look Keep at you Keep your and character say you, the same in the face yeah. of other people's character. Right, right. Just, just, just be noble yeah. about it. Be careful. Be you. And just, I mean, because you don't want it to get to the point where people are starting about take, taking offers away from you, di- doing different things like that. Yeah, people that just don't just the things you can control, you can <coughs> control your attitude, your character, and your <coughs> your respect. Life and I do, and I do think Hart kind of has a little bit. I, I'm, I'm going to shoot Hart some bail out. Yeah, they, he did make a post about Will Felton, and then somebody else responded talking about Carter. It wasn't, yeah, it was, wasn't. And then he talked, and then he posts a picture of Will Felton blocking Carter Witt. Why yeah, did you have that picture? <laughs> that is that is the inter- interesting conversation. But also, I mean, Will in his 
kid are, I'm sure they're pretty close. They're, they're tight. Both, yeah, they're both Garo family. They probably played together for many years. Art says well. he's cool with his, his dad. His dad is, um, you know, him, him, him. So, not, it's natural to say something like that, but it's also natural for Carter to feel some type of way when people keep on saying stuff about him. He's one of the probably one of the more talked about kids in this yeah. class. Like every like I said, it, some people it just seems like everybody has something to say about Carter Witt. <laughs> yeah, he's a polarizing figure. You know, I, I feel like I love that he embraced it too. This 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 kid's been going in people's heads like on yeah, the no, court. You know, he, 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 the last two times out the uh, against Millbrook, the last three times out at full strength, Leeds will beat Millbrook all three times. Although Millbrook did kind of. They kind of gave away the last one. Yeah, at full strength, I feel I'm a little disappointed. Melbourne didn't get anything out of these last two years for me. That's how yeah, I, feel I mean. But you, when you look at it, when you don't have they still have a chance next. We don't have a guy like Nolan Dorsey play That's at true. all for you for for the year. That would have been huge. Yeah, yeah, that'll that'll. Hurt Jalen you McCoy's there. played great. All Sam Hood yeah. has been great for them. Yeah. But um, that was just, I, I, I really wish there was like clones of me that could go to some of these games. Maybe. That yeah, would have been an awesome well, game to go I'll, to. I'll be at Clay Westover. Um, I might, I think I, I'm going to go back to Conley Girls and go see Jackson. I think you're going to go see Conley and Jackson Girls. I, I think they ain't playing six, so I could actually I mean, sneak over to the Fargo Girls game, too. Yeah, I think yeah. that would be an awesome game, honestly. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, not going to yeah. hold you. Not going to hold you. Like <laughs> no doubt. Um, we at fourth round. It is it is go time. One win away from regionals, three wins away from the state title. Uh, it's 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 go time now. Yeah. The best of the best are at this stage now. Yeah. So if you're one of the teams still practicing today, congratulations on getting here. Don't 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 don't, don't take it for granted. Don't say don't take it for granted. Because you never know when it could be your last day. Yeah, I mean, there's only uh, what sixty four teams left practicing now. I that think. means there are 64 teams worth of seniors who have played their last games of basketball. Some of them will go on to college. A lot of them won't. So put, make, seize the day, go out there, hoop, have yeah. fun. Yeah. Embrace, the, especially for seniors. Oh, yeah. This is good advice, really. Yeah. Just embrace this because you yeah, you're, you're not, you're not going to get a moment like this again. Mo but, yeah, I mean, most of the time... Like, underclassmen will, but you won't. So I know there are going to be kids it, going all out. To me, you will never get as much coverage, unless you're going to say a UNC or Duke, that you're not. You're never going to get this much coverage again. You're never going to get this much camera time. You're never going to get this much um, attention again. Attention so, from not just, like, local reporters, yeah. but, like, videographers like yeah, vi us. Like yeah, videographers, statewide people cover basketball. You'll probably have some college coaches in the building. And these are the stories you're going to talk about for 10, 20 years. I, when you tell, bro, when you tell I, your kids I stunk. About, I'm not a good basketball player. I don't have a good – your career is a lot better than mine. You know, mine I, ended in 11th grade because I was like, I'm – who cares? I want to make money and, and work. Well, and you, well, you, you have made very, you made out very good. Yeah, I'm not good, but me, I'm time. not sure about me. But you've made out just fine. Man, hey, you play with Deuce Bell. Well, well, I was on the JV team, and you was you was practicing with Deuce Bell. I went to the jumper in Quincy Mo's face in practice yeah. once. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I don't have that story. I can't tell that story. Who, who was I? That, you know, Man. but nonetheless, but, um, uh, yeah. So just enjoy the, enjoy these moments. Uh, you're gonna talk about it for a long time with a lot of these guys. Whenever you see them again, sometimes you're gonna see them um, every day. Some, some of these guys you're gonna see every couple months. Every, some of these guys you are gonna see month. again for yeah. decades. Heck, I ran into a teammate at the barbershop the other day who I who I hadn't seen in like seven years. We live in the same town. Yeah, it's it, I, I haven't see I haven't had that type of story, but. You know, you know, he increased, bro. That's that is true. But you can DM, but can't you like DM like Quincy Miller? No, I mean, I, I'm not sure if he would respond, but I, mean, uh, I can. He, everyone loves like a BB. I I hope so. A BB. Um, a BB. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, uh, that's it. WJG man. Sports Classic. God, another fit, another hour, fifteen. We we just talk, we just talk forever, don't we? Yeah, but man. once again, just a few more reminders. 
The WJG Sports Classic is Sunday, March 15th. Yeah. Wayne Country Day School goes to North Carolina. Away. I am nervous. I'm... I am very nervous. Yeah. So, but once again, to all the players that uh, uh, have confirmed that they're coming and they're going to be a part of this, we thank you very much for being a part of right. this event. To the parents as well, thank you. Uh, yeah, we hope it's going to be a great thing they can continue for decades on. To represent Daboro. Yeah, Daboro in the right, in the, in the right light. Um, no, matter, no matter what, I just, want, I just want people to know that this guy, this guy has done a lot for the city in the last several months and Big years, time. I would say. And uh, obviously, I, want, I wanted to succeed for him. And I hope I hope to be a good part of it as well. I think it's going to be fun for picture family. man. We picture man. Yes, I'll be doing pictures. Kyle will be on video. We'll have some videographers as well. We got Trey who for makes tapes. Trey yeah. Gordon, Brandon Corbett. Uh, we, we love his work. It's supposed to be all about athletes. It's supposed Austin's to be in gonna the be building. Here, yeah. We're supposed to have hoops HQ in the building. Shout out, Lil Benji. We're trying to get TK Media in the in the, in the building. Uh, we got um, Jay Anderson and Charles Clark. As Charles well. Clark will be in the oh, Charles Clark. Jay Anderson actually will be with Big Shots. Oh, that's right. That's right. So yeah, we have a, we have a good amount of cameras. That Maybe we should get there. Judas to come on over because he can't. Hey, yeah. Judas has an invite. He said yes. he might come. He might not. You know, I, we we want JS three. So yeah, we ENC uh, moments dot com. Yeah, yeah, so we uh. We'll see what happens from here. You know, we hope it's going to be a great thing. Matter of fact, we know it's going to be a great thing. Yes. It's nerve-wracking trying to finish putting these last details together. We're probably 85% of the way there now. It's all about pushing in that last 15% to get ready and get done and help these kids out. Hopefully, coaches, um, hopefully all the coaches we invited, hopefully we get some. In yeah, as yeah. Well. We, you know, there's going to be some, you know, of course. We do have some confirmed, yes. Yeah, we, we have some confirmed. We're hoping to get about at least 10 to 15 college coaches in the building. Um, right now, we have about five or six. So, right now, we're going to rock with whoever is going to be we, there. But we appreciate y'all for rocking with us. We're at yeah. home. We're getting close to 850 subs. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, it's our, been, goal, it's, our goal has been a thousand. Uh, yeah, that's why. That's why we've been saying get us to a thousand. Yeah, we've been uh, grinding and working. So uh, tonight I'll probably be at Princeton South and more baseball for this. I'm probably gonna come with you. I guess. So uh, yes. yeah, that's, I can picture man. That's there. it. You know where to find us at at WJG Sports on Instagram. WJG at, underscore Sports on Twitter. Yep. At WJG Sports on Facebook. Yep. And, and you know, J. Kai Jones. Strike Inch 24 underscore. Uh, um, Facebook, I mean, on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, and, uh, you know, if you, would like, if you would like to purchase photos, please support your boy. Like a B, was it? Like, like a B. A B. Dot com. Yeah, he has plenty of pictures from last six months, seven months, eight months, some, whatever it is, um, from just multitude of events, so go out there. He might have something that he did last year that you're looking for. So that is true. But All yeah, right. we've talked a lot. Yeah, that's uh, it. Thirty-four episodes down, just like Brothers Podcast. That's Kai Jones. I'm like it would be thirty-four. Episodes. Peace, Peace out. Peace.